Welcome to my first devlog in 2021. Today we're going to talk collisions, collisions, collisions. If you're new to the channel, I'm Annie and I'm in the process of building my first video game, a little 2D train game that I plan to release on mobile. Gotta start somewhere, right? Here's some gameplay. You have to operate the railway switches in order to make the trains go to the right depots. And the right depot is just one that has the same color as the train. So having seen some gameplay footage, you might be wondering where and why I would need colliders in this game. Check out this other level. Got it? By the way, since this video is all about collisions, make sure that your mouse pointer or finger collides with that subscribe button below. All right, before we dive into this and get into collisions, I wanna fix something. The game doesn't have a title yet. Well, it's currently called Train Station Unity Project, which might not be optimal. My main criteria for the game are that it's short, easy to remember, and that it doesn't evoke any expectations the game can't fulfill. So I'm not gonna call it bombastic train explosion game, although that rhymes kinda nicely. Also, the name should not yet be taken by one of the roughly 1 million other train games out there. I think a good way to go about this is to just ask my massive Twitter fan base, letting people vote on a few options. All right, let's check the results. Okay, a bit more waiting and I did actually get a few votes. The results are consistent with what my family and friends like best and I like it as well. So the game is now officially called On Track. To celebrate this milestone and to actually utilize the new name in some way, let's introduce a top level namespace to the project. I'm not even gonna try to rename the Unity project. I'm sure that would break my computer or something. Okay, on to the collisions I promised. Maybe you'll actually even learn something useful now. You've probably figured out the issue. Depending on the railway network, which will of course be different in each level, trains can currently just move on top of each other, either because of a crossing or alternatively, because tracks merge together. This is not only visually very dissatisfying, it also breaks the game in a lot of cases because you can't direct trains that are on top of each other to different depots if you need to. To solve this issue, I considered a few different ideas and I settled on a collision-based system. If you're new to Unity, you have to note that colliders don't necessarily need to cause a physical collision where they bounce off of each other or generally apply a force. You can also use colliders as so-called triggers. When at least one out of two game objects has the trigger flag set, Unity's trigger event functions will fire off when these two game objects collide. The event functions I need are on trigger enter and on trigger exit. By the way, don't forget to attach a rigid body to one of the two game objects, even when you just need the trigger functionality. Otherwise, Unity's event functions will not be called. And this absolutely did not take me an hour of my life to figure out. So starting simple, let's add colliders to the depots to detect when a train arrives. By the way, I'll make some proper depot sprites. These circles are just placeholders. Similarly, we can add a simple circle collider 2D to the train spawn points to detect when a spawn point is occupied and of course, when it is ready to spawn a new train. Obviously, for these colliders to actually collide with something, we also need colliders on the trains themselves. More on that in a moment. But first, a quick look at the track crossings and merge points. I found it surprisingly tricky to implement a system using only train colliders that catches all possible edge cases without becoming ridiculously complicated. So instead, we're gonna introduce yet another set of colliders. At each crossing or merge point, I automatically generate a collider when the scene is set up, so the crossing itself can manage incoming traffic. It does so using a simple queue data structure, stopping trains while the crossing is occupied and letting the next train waiting in queue onto the crossing once the previous train has left. So now we can move on to train colliders. I initially put a single collider on each train 
and I ended up with a massive pile of spaghetti coat. And it didn't even work. Please enjoy the upcoming compilation of the various ways in which this did not work out. So we need to clean up the mess. Instead of the single train collider, I'll have multiple train colliders for different purposes that each live in their own child game object. For example, there's a dedicated depot collider on each train that only collides with depots. And here's the full train collider setup. We have a depot collider, a spawn point one, another one for track crossings and front and back colliders. For example, a train's reaction to a collision depends on whether it bumped into a train in front of it or the other way around. It is the train that is being bumped into. As part of the railway network, we have corresponding static colliders on each depot, spawn point and crossing. Now, the remaining question is, how do we make these dedicated train colliders only collide with the colliders we want them to collide with? The solution is to create a dedicated layer for each collision type, which we can then assign to the collider game objects. Careful here, we also need to adjust the layer collision matrix in the project settings. Otherwise, all layers will just still collide with all the other layers and they would be useless. And finally, let's check out the end result. I'm sure you're curious. To really test the system, I've adjusted the spawn probabilities a little bit so that we get a lot of simultaneously spawning trains. And this is working nicely. Crossings handle the incoming traffic, trains are stopping if they are about to bump into other trains, spawn points don't spawn more trains as long as they are occupied, and depots detect when trains arrive. Thanks for watching! And if you think the game is a bit boring, watch out for the next devlog, because that one is gonna be about making it more fun.